Now that I've completed my quilt binding top, we're going to now work on finishing the back side of our binding. Tried and true method, hand sewing, okay? Like everything else, since you spent so much time creating your beautiful quilt, you want good supplies to finish the process. Decent needles are good because they're going to make the job easier. Um, I like these black gold needles because they've got a fine penetration point when it comes to going through the fabric. It's easier on your hands, easier on the fabric. It doesn't create a lot of holes as you sew. Again, a good quality cotton thread is great. Mettler Orofil, there are other brands as well, but we carry Orofil and Mettler here in the store. Cotton is nice because you're using a cotton quilt with all cotton fabric. So I have loaded my needle with cotton thread. I put a knot on the end, a very fine knot, and it is right here. So now I'm going to feed it through the back of my quilt. And I'm just doing it through the binding layer at the tippy top, like so. I'm trying to create, I believe it's called a blind stitch or whip stitch or an applique stitch. So it's pretty invisible as I sew. So here we go. I've got my first stitch here. You're going to take your needle and go right above that entry point of where you put that first stitch. And then on the diagonal, you're going to just nip a bit of that binding and a little bit of your backing and then proceed forward. So your stitch is upright sitting up top squarely on top of that point. So again, I'm going to go right above that line where I just exited my binding and go back in on an angle and proceed forward. Your goal is, because you can see my little bits of purple thread, to match the color of the binding if you want it almost invisible. All right. So I'm going to proceed on here a little bit and then I'm going to talk to you again when I reach my corner where the miter is. I'm here at the corner and now I want to attack it or I'm approaching it. So I'm going to remove my flower head pin and I might secure that corner angle with my thumb but probably a better way to do it is to locate a clover clip and put it right there. But since I'm working right now, I'm going to continue on. So I am going to work my way up this little mitered angle a bit so it stays in place and proceed on as I did with the others. So I'm going to kind of scoot up here just to nick it. And then I'm going to sew my way back down. So again, I'm going to go back right under that fabric. Take a little nip here. And proceed with my blind stitch or blind, my whip stitch. This is great mindful work. You can listen to a podcast, audiobook, television, whatever music you enjoy. When you're stitching, I want to have it at a point where I've got tautness, but I don't want any puckering. So I'm kind of trying to find that sweet spot as I'm pulling my thread through. Just like tension when you're knitting or any other type of activity, you want to create a consistent tension and you want it to remain flat and flush, but you don't want it to pucker. I might ease it a little bit as I sew like that to get any puckers out. So I'm going to continue on and complete everything, but just to turn my quilt over, just to give you an idea of what the finish looks like here. This is it. So we're going to continue sewing this all the way around so we do all the four corners. To finish it, let me show you how I would finish it. So I am going to go down here Let's pretend it's all done. I'm going to take a little baby stitch in my backing and in my uh, backing fabric, like so. Give it a tug. Then I'm going to take another tiny stitch unto itself, like it's almost imperceptible. I'm going to take my needle and go one, two, maybe three turns. 
hold that, hold my thread, and then pull through. Okay, then I'm going to go back to where I created that stitch, and I'm going to give it like a half inch or a quarter inch stitch, not through the binding, but through that top part of my backing and through the batting, and give it a tug, like so. And then you hear a pop, and I buried my stitch. This happens too when you run out of thread while you're doing the process. All right, so you don't even kind of know where you knotted it. The knot is buried in between the batting and the backing fabric. Now I've completed my binding and you're, it's ready to go. Um, you can put it on display, lay it on your bed, do whatever you want, but now you've finished your whole project. Thank you. Thank you.